Bob, sleep is a state of consciousness. I want to understand consciousness, so I have to understand sleep. How do we look at the different kinds of sleep? Most people think sleep is just one thing. It's really interesting that until the 1950s, as far as anybody knew, sleep was sleep. We knew there was deep sleep and lighter sleep, but the thought was that we just sort of, you know, we had deep sleep and lighter sleep, and that's all there was to it. And then in the 1960s, someone stuck some recording electrodes on the scalp of someone while they were sleeping and said, oh my God, this is really strange. <laughs> because what you see across the night, if you look at the brain's activity, is that we go through a series of states that cycles through the night. So you might imagine that we start out with light sleep and then we go into deeper and deeper sleep and most of the night we're in deep sleep and near the end it gets lighter again and that's all there is to it. But there's actually a 90 minute cycle all night long mm. when the brain goes through a series of different stages and basically we divide them into REM sleep or REM sleep which is named for rapid eye movements because if you look at the eyes of a person, and you can do this with your spouse, or you can do it with your children if you watch them while they're sleeping, sometimes you'll see under their eyelids, you can see the eyes flittering back and forth. And that happens about every 90 minutes, all night long. For, for how long a period of time? Well, at the start of the night, a REM period might only last two or three minutes. By the end of the night, they can be 45 minutes, or in some cases, even stretch out closer to an hour. So it turns out that we get our deep sleep early in the night, and that's pretty much done by the middle of the night, by four hours into the night. And then most of the REM sleep, it just gets stronger and stronger as we go later into the night. And these aren't just different because they have rapid eye movements or don't. There are a bunch of things that are changing. So if we look at the EEG. The electroencephalogram. The electroencephalogram, so you basically just pasting some electrodes and looking through the scalp at the electrical activity of the brain, what you see is that when we're in REM sleep, it looks very much like we're awake. The, the EEG activity is different all over the brain, and it's, it's going fast. Desynchronized. Desynchronized is the term. There's no pattern to it. In contrast, when you're in, in, in slow wave sleep or deep sleep, the deepest part of the night, what you see is that the EEG just looks like these big waves going at about this speed, as if a huge fraction of all the nerve cells in your brain are all firing synchronized, boom, 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 for a half hour, 45 minutes. And there's other things that change. And there would be less consciousness in that because there's a, uh, the nerve cells are all doing the same thing and not, not doing the very specialized things they would do. That's about. what we used to think. We used to think that with all these, if, you know, if everybody's just doing the same thing, then there's only one thing that's happening. Um, now we're not so sure about that. In terms of the consciousness, of course, all we can do is wake people up and see what we get. We can wake them up and see how easy they are to wake up mm -hmm. and how quickly they come alert. Or we can just ask them, do you remember anything from while you were asleep? And in fact, when you wake people from REM sleep, you're most likely to get dream reports. But if you wake people from this deep, slow wave sleep, this deepest part of the night, about a quarter of the time or even more, you'll get some reports of mental activity. They might not be these crazy, wild dreams, but they'll tell you they were thinking about this, or they were wondering about this, or these images were going through their mind. At this point, I'm not convinced that we're not conscious all night long, and that it's just there's parts that it's easier to remember it from than others. But there's certainly no stage of sleep from which we don't get reports of mental activity. The activity seems to be different. The dreams are more, robust, they're more bizarre, there's more in REM vivid sleep. in REM sleep. And they tend towards being more thought-like in non-REM sleep. But you can get the fully bizarre, vivid stories in non-REM, and you can get the thought-like from REM. So, but this cycle throughout the night, as you have this development at the beginning, REM sleep is very short and it right. grows during the night. Th th that cuts across cultures? Uh, and it cuts across all cultures, it cuts across all ages. 
It cuts across almost all medical and psychiatric conditions. Interestingly, depressed people, their REM sleep starts earlier in the night. Mm. And when you treat them with antidepressive drugs, the first change you see is that the REM sleep sort of slides back where it belongs. And that'll happen before they actually see improvements in the depression symptoms. And it can predict who's going to respond to a drug and who isn't. But basically, that's everybody. Everybody has this same pattern. Now, if you wake up at 2 in the morning and get up then the, and skip the later part of the night so that you lose that REM sleep late in the night, the next night you'll get REM sleep earlier. Or if you stay up until 2 in the morning and only get the latter part of the night and so get more REM sleep and not so much slow wave, you might get more slow waves the next night. So the brain has a counter in there. It's keeping track of how much sleep you're getting and how much of different stages. And it all averages these out across nights. Which argues that maybe each stage has its own functional need, which uh, Absolutely. Re and in fact, in fact, I can train you on certain tasks that will lead to you having more of one type of sleep or more of another, depending apparently on which stage of sleep you use to get the improvement, what stage of sleep that the brain uses to strengthen those memories. And there have been... There's so even how does that work? I mean, which, which stage affect, affects, for example, which stage affects which kinds of memories? So the honest answer is we're not sure yet. But here's what we think. We think that memories for events and facts, what we call declarative memory, that that tends to be during slow wave sleep. And in contrast, during REM sleep, you're enhancing memories that have to do with how to do things. If you're learning to play ping pong during the day, it's the REM sleep that looks like it might be important for strengthening that at night. But it also looks like REM sleep is important for emotional memories. And REM sleep might be important for that creative aspect of sleep, where you find new ways to put things together. How does that relate to dreaming during that period? So the brain is going through these different stages where it's not just the electroencephalogram that's changing, but the neurochemicals that are active in the brain are changing. The regions of the brain that are active are changing. So it looks like when we're in REM sleep versus non-REM sleep, the brain's in an entirely different program, if you will. It's almost like it's running one program in non-REM and another program in REM. And they're both carrying out functions they're absolutely critical to the, to the optimal development, to the optimal learning, to the optimal functioning of, of the person or the animal. And this goes all the way down through the animal kingdom. So these stages of sleep really are taking that night and dividing it up so that all together we can optimize our own benefits really from what happened during the day before.